Brad Burrow here with Flames Unfiltered. Thanks for joining us on a Flames Unfiltered Shorts. Took a couple days to do this just because I wanted to let the road trip sink in and, and what it really means. A week ago, the Flames went out on a four-game road trip. It started last Sunday night in Chicago. Flames win 5-1. Handled the Blackhawks, which you should pretty handily. And then it went on to Florida. A Florida game where Calgary had a lead 2-1. to one. And then the power play tip-in by Thornton at the end of the first was the backbreaker. That changed everything in this game. The Flames outshoot Florida 49-45. to 45. The single most shots in an NHL game this year. It's not a game the Flames are going to win. It's not their style. Yes, their style is to get a lot of shots, but they're more of a, I don't know, lockdown, eliminate chances type team. So it wasn't a recipe for success. We learned a lot in that Florida game. At least I did. I was really disappointed after that game. Mm, kind of because I started to get the picture that we're not close to elite. Or, well, I should... We're not as close as I thought. That'd probably be the better way to put it. Florida was young, fast, solid, and good. Top to bottom, cup contender. Sutter said that after the game in the press conference. I thought, well, maybe things will be better the next night, two nights later in, in Tampa. Got out shot 33 27, a little bit. Better game to start for the Flames. But they had no chance of scoring in the second or third period. They were held to the outside. Their chances were non-existent. And where they were completely controlled, in my mind, by the Lightning. The Lightning looked like a team that would win two cups in a row and will probably contend for another one. So another elite team that Calgary doesn't do well against. The next night, Friday night, in Carolina, another team that's been overlooked in my mind a lot this year, um, a great Hurricanes team, a team that beat the Flames in overtime earlier this year. And I thought the first time the Flames played them, it was a closer game. This one, 6-3 final, score probably was a little bit more than what it really was, I guess. 1-1 one, one after 1, and then all oh, hell broke loose in the second. Carolina just started popping him in. Vladar gets the start because of Markstrom's injury that we have no details on at all. Um, disappointing again. Uh, it was so awakening, I guess, to see that maybe this team is not as close as many of us thought this year. Now, going into the year, we were really apprehensive, didn't think much of this team, but as it built and as Calgary got off to a much better start than any of us anticipated, our hopes got higher and higher and higher. My hopes got pretty high. I looked at this team and thought, hmm, add a piece here, add a piece there, we take that step. But then during this, we noticed a few things. We talked about a top six that was pretty solid for the Flames. Well, some of the players on that aren't producing. Blake Coleman, which I thought Blake Coleman was actually our best player on this road trip. But he hasn't been putting the points that we thought. His shooting percentage is always just over 5%, which is a career low for him. So I think we're going to get a change in that. Backlund's not producing. Dylan Dubé looks like... He'll never score again in my mind. Sean Monahan's not doing well. We've just got a bunch of guys. Tyler Pitlick's injured right now, and he wasn't producing a prior to that. Or actually, he's not injured right now. He's just been out of the lineup. We're so used to him being injured, aren't we? He's just out of the lineup right now because he isn't producing. Um, Brad Richardson looked not good, I didn't think. Um, no, no, I'm not one of those crazy guys that thinks that that bottom six is going to go out there and put a bunch of points up for us. They're not. 
but I really learned that our forward depth, when you compare it to Tampa Bay, and I had a horrible comparison because they are the defending cup champs, but you compare it to Florida and you compare it to Carolina, it doesn't stack up. It does not stack up. We can think that Richardson and Lewis and all these guys are going to stack up, but they don't. They may bring veteran leadership, but it has to correlate on the ice too. One of the things that this team is missing in Calgary and has been missing for years is that prospect to step in. The prospect that makes $750,000 so it makes that cap work to step in and produce points. We don't have that right now. Our offensive talent is weak. We were held to the perimeter by these better teams. And honestly, I thought, you know, as much as the first lines carried us this year and it's probably not fair to rip on them, Struggled a little bit on this road trip. Lindholm didn't look the same. Gaudreau had spurts, but for the most part, didn't look the same. Kachuk looked disengaged against Carolina, I thought. Um, just not, not really good. I think what we learned was there's a big difference between elite and hopeful. And we're hopeful. Can we add pieces? Yes, we can add pieces. Is there pieces available to add? with the cap space we have to make us elite? I'm afraid not. Am I throwing this season down the tubes? No. I think anything can happen, especially with the Sutter team once you make the playoffs. So there's a lot to look forward to. But now with the schedule up in the air, that's going to play havoc. We don't even know when we're playing our next game. We hope Thursday night. Don't know though. It's going to be a lot of things up in the air and it's going to be really interesting to see how this team rebounds from that and how they handle that because the unknown's tough it's tough to plan for how they bounce back from this road trip that yeah it was a gauntlet of a road trip but you have to bounce back from it now we need to put up some points but my biggest fear is this so we realize that this year we're probably not a contender unless we go on one hell of a run but what does that lead us for next year when we likely won't be able to sign Kachuk, Gaudreau, Majapani, and Schillington? We won't have be able to sign all of those guys. If we figure out a way, it's going to be amazing. So in all reality, next year, shoot, if we're able to pick up a guy deadline, he's going to have to be a UFA because we won't be able to afford him for next year because we have to worry about our, our current players that we have to re-sign. We're probably going to be a weaker team next year than we are this year. And we're having a hard time running with the big boys this year. That's not good.